It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up, folks? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Wear Coins and Precious Metals. Got the live Deerfield cam up. It's been a little dirty for a little while now because the sea's been pretty rough, but kind of cleaned up today and it looks like the visibility is not that great, but uh, getting nicer and it's just so otherworldly looking when you uh, uh, look at this. I think that's a fox face. I'm not quite sure. No, that's not a fox face. Uh, but a uh, very pretty cam and you can watch it for free. It's called the Deerfield Live uh, Underwater Cam. <clears throat> And it's uh, presented by the city of Deerfield Beach. i got to see if I can get my own little town when they finally get the pier here fixed. I want to see if I can get them to put it in an underwater camp. Well, let's take a look at uh, today's markets here. Uh, kind of sideways action. Man, that's all we've been seeing is a lot of sideways action, especially with gold. Gold's kind of been holding its own pretty good in this upper 17, uh, eight, for all intents and purposes, we can call it 1800. Let me do a quick refresh here and see if we've dropped back a little bit. Kind of as I suspected, markets were a little hotter last night, especially with silver. Uh, backed off a little bit today. We'll take a look at the 24-hour charts here in a few moments. Uh, let's look at the ranges, overnight ranges since yesterday's close. Uh, a low of 1789.62, so basically 1790. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, at a high of uh, 1800, uh, basically 1801 right there, and we're sitting at 1791. For all intents and purposes, we're at 1800, but for some of these technical traders, you know, things like 1800, 1900, 2000, uh, again, psychological numbers for some of these guys. So that's why you kind of see it just kind of bouncing around, just tad under 1800, just a tad over. It's kind of like a, a battle going on here. Uh, battle Royale. <laughs> Let's take a look at the silver here, ranges too, 20, 22, 21. Uh, so far, we haven't popped below that $22 mark but if we do again great opportunity to buy the dip in my opinion uh, high at 2279 I don't know where that came from but I do know where it came from because I did look at overnight markets which we'll take a look at in a moment here the 24-hour charts currently sitting at 2251 pretty good strength you know <clears throat> but as I said it's kind of like uh, you know silver buyers uh, and gold buyers for the most part especially silver buyers though uh, silver buyers have to have you have to have a strong stomach if you're watching this stuff if you're one of those people that just buy something and you put it away and you don't look at it for a year or two uh, you don't have that issue but if you're watching silver every day um, and most new people do especially when they've invested a decent amount of money in it and uh, uh, when they first buy it they start watching the price every day and I tell you I have to do it I have to do it for a living uh, well because I do it for a living I got to watch the prices I've done it since 1977 Took a little hiatus in between, but uh, I've been pretty much a full-time uh, precious metal retail and wholesaler uh, in gold, silver, and platinum <clears throat> since 1977. And uh, I've seen these patterns, and I've also uh, been through the same agony. You know, very early on, I went through a lot. Remember, I went through the 80s market. I went through the 2012 market. Uh, so I've been through the agony of watching prices get monkey hammered down substantially. However, once I learned why and who and how, and I, I, I found out that the market is uh, uh, manipulated heavily in the COMEX markets, and it's done by uh, big uh, short in silver, done by big short positions. And as far as gold goes, GATA.org contends that uh, gold has been held down by uh, uh, the Bank of International Settlements, and the uh, uh, central bankers have kept the price of gold down substantially, and they have good evidence to back that up, as does Ted Butler, has excellent evidence to back up that the uh, price is manipulated in silver uh, by uh, the uh, big short uh, commercials. And uh, uh, COMEX allows this to happen over and over. And the CFTC, who is the governing agency, but again, we can't expect much from governing government agencies. The, the only time they react is if, it, if an honest person does something wrong, then they go screw them, you know. But <laughs> that's all right. Maybe that's just my opinion. But I don't have too much faith in government uh, agencies. They, they usually, uh, uh, they're usually part of the problem because they never take a look at the problem until it blows up and then they say oh, oh we didn't know this was happening bullshit they know this stuff was going on but I digress again let's take a look at platinum market here currently 935.56 a nice range there man platinum our chart guy hey where are you chart guy you've been watching the videos <laughs> my chart guy in comments was feeling that we were going to see a low of 855 in platinum and uh, <clears throat> We did see it dip below 900, but did not stay there for long. I'm still curious to see by year end if we see that the sub 900 and platinum, but it's not looking like it right now. But hey, listen, we still got uh, enough days in this month for, for these guys to come in and monkey hammer all these prices down. The paper markets, of course, the comics markets are gonna monkey hammer these numbers down, but again, provides 
us apes, gold, silver, and platinum apes, with a great opportunity to buy the dips. Buy the freaking dips. Uh, again, that's my opinion. I'm sure most of you watching this video, it's your opinion as well. Uh, that's why we probably get along so well. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the 24-hour charts here in gold first. Let's see where the activity did take place. And uh, uh, let me do just a quick refresh here. Of course, we, can, we know where the uh, down activity takes place. <laughs> Oh, uh, gold spot prices last night. I suspect it looks like uh, uh, I don't trust uh, Globex. I don't think I've ever seen trades that would cause the gold price to go up on the Globex market. This is up numbers right here are probably in Hong Kong, in my opinion, or London. Uh, I forget when the Hong Kong market's open. I think it's like 1.30 a.m. or something like that. And let's see, what time would be 1.30 in uh, Comex time? It'd be right about this time, you know, right in this area right here. So... <clears throat> Looks like maybe some activity in the Hong Kong uh, and continuing into the London markets here as far as the uh, up, up stages yesterday of uh, the metals hitting close to 1800. And then boom, look where it happens, New York, of course. New York, New York. <laughs> uh, and uh, take a look at this and just downwards from here to that uh, sub-1790 level. What are they showing right here? 1788, 1789. Let me do a refresh over here. Looks like she's taking a little... Yep, there we go. Gold's taking a little dump there, 222, but not much. Still in that high 17, not much of a dump. Uh, again, range mound we've been for quite some time. But coincidentally, look where it happens on the New York Comex markets. Uh, Comex, 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 Comex. <laughs> and the new crooked Comex markets. Uh, again, that's my opinion, and an opinion of a lot of people way smarter than me, like Ted Butler and GATA.org. Let's take a look at the 24-hour spot silver bid, too. I think we're going to see the same thing happen. I'm going to do a quick refresh. And uh, where was our up market in silver last night? It looks like, again, same place around probably Hong Kong and London, continuation through Hong Kong and London. Uh, again, I don't know. Some of these markets, New York is almost a 20, New York Globex is a, almost a 24-hour market. It's run by Comex. So in my opinion, it's another crooked trading, pl trading platform. And I believe that a lot of the spoofing that took place in the past in gold and silver markets probably occurred in the New York Globex market. Very thinly traded uh, uh, precious metals are very thinly traded on there, <clears throat> and uh, chances are, I think a couple times in the past when we've seen some huge monkey hammering, it was a result of a large amount of uh, uh, paper being sold into thinly traded midnight or early morning New York Globex markets, a place where nobody would ever in their right mind that had any kind of money, much less the type of uh, amounts of gold and silver that were being sold would never sell into the New York Globex market unless their intent was simply to drive the prices down, manipulative. And that's why I don't trust the New York Globex market. But again, I can't tell where these trades take, court, take, take place. Could this up market take place because of the trades done on New York Globex or was it done in London and Hong Kong? Hard to tell because these charts don't differentiate that. If anybody that listens to my video that's uh, uh, knows where how we can tell where you know you see this upline right here that that had to occur because of some trades you know paper trades obviously in the gold and silver markets uh, but where did those trades occur were they in Hong Kong were they in London or were they in New York Globex um, uh, where do you get that information so if anybody has a good uh, source on that uh, let me know put it in the comment section I really believe I, I really uh, appreciate that especially chart guy chart guy seems to know these kind of things. Uh, let's take a look in. Look where the uh, monkey hammering is taking place. New York, same place it's been taking place for the last two or three months now. In the morning, at the beginning of New York comics markets, and that's where the trashing takes place. Uh, again, don't trust the New York comics myself personally. Uh, and uh, uh, for the longest time, I view gold and silver this way. Uh, these paper markets, Comex markets, NYMEX markets, uh, 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 Globex markets, the London markets, uh, they're, they're mostly paper markets. They're mostly, uh, the, uh, you know, the trades, the price discovery is based on the paper markets here on this short-term daily thing with the futures contracts, and this is how the spot price is derived. So if that, if that price is kind of rigged and crooked, uh, it obviously tells you the spot prices aren't correct for sure. And, but here's the problem with that is for years and years and years, for decades now, these markets have been dictating what actual physical gold and silver would sell for, the spot price of what you, know, what you would pay to actually hold it in your hands and buy it, these stupid paper trades. And basically, the paper, I, I figure the gold and silver market like a, like a dog. And the, uh, the physical, which would be the gold and silver bars, are the uh, dog itself. And the 
the uh, COMEX and the paper markets are the tail. And you've heard the, uh, you know, the old saying about the, uh, uh, the tail wagging the dog. Well, that's exactly what we've had going on for years and years and years with these uh, COMEX markets, uh, London markets, and these other crooked markets, in my opinion. <clears throat> we had the, the tail wagging the dog. I think we're going to see a reversal of that at some point. Uh, it, physical is going to uh, uh, start wagging the tail again. And uh, I don't know how that's going to look exactly because I've never seen it in my lifetime. <laughs> I think these markets have been rigged since I was a kid, since Nixon took us off the gold standard. And if you go back and you look at news articles, type in the London pool, talk, type, type in these markets really gold and silver markets have been rigged for a long ever ever since they took us off the gold standard here and uh, uh, again the markets have been rigged for a long time both in London and New York uh, London primarily with the gold markets and uh, uh, New York primarily with the silver markets but gold markets as well uh, and again by large commercial banks that are allowed to do this like JP who's just been busted for the third time but it's not going to do any jail time um, and probably should. Too big to fail, too big to jail. Let's take a look at markets today, by the way, and see where we're at. Uh, of course, we got a little rebound going on here, you know, which doesn't surprise me. I, I, you know, we've seen a couple of these big drops in the uh, Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ, and uh, <clears throat> they've seemed to have been accompanied uh, shortly thereafter with just, you know, big ups, uh, and we seem to be breaking new highs all the time. Obviously, even CNBC, Bloomberg, even the talking heads on TV, uh, the stupid talking heads on TV parrot the same thing over and over that they're wondering when this market's going to blow up. They can't even tell you that. Uh, again, we discussed this yesterday, and if you notice, I haven't dropped any F-bombs today. So yesterday was my F-bomb day, by the way. I, I dropped, if you missed yesterday's video and you like F-bombs, man, that was one of my big, I even listened to it again. I said, holy smokes, man, I did drop some F-bombs for sure. However, you know, um, I think F-bombs are a good indication of passionate speech. <laughs> you could say that. And when someone starts throwing off some F-bombs without regard to who's listening to it, you know that they're talking from uh, the very core of themselves. And that's exactly where I felt yesterday is that uh, I just got angry with some of this stuff. Not with the silver markets being manipulated because we know all markets are manipulated and if you don't play, you can't win. You just got to know how these markets are manipulated. But just the political situation in general, uh, the things going on with the uh, 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 Critter 19. Uh, again, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, if you don't like F-bombs, don't watch yesterday's video. <laughs> but if you don't mind an F-bomb and you like someone that's a little bit passionate and uh, uh, was speaking the truth, uh, in my opinion, uh, you can watch yesterday's video. It won't kill you. Uh, but I'll get into that in a little bit, by the way. I don't know how, why I digressed into that, but I just noticed I've been a little bit calmer with the F-bombs today. But mine, get, get, let me watch, see something here that I don't like, and I'll start throwing some out there. So uh, I'll try to warn you ahead of time so some of you can cover your ears. Let's take a look at uh, Dow. Uh, again, everything's up right here. Kind of expected this. Is this a dead cat bounce, or is this just a continuation of what we've been watching? Which brings up the big point. When is you know, when is, when is, that's the big point on everything. When is gold going to go up? When is silver going to go up? When is the stock market going to uh, take its big dump? When is cryptos going to uh, go up or down? I mean, when is, is the, the really the big question. And uh, if you're looking on a short-term basis, I think it's like a casino gambling. You know, you have a good chance of being wrong or right. Um, you know, and if you're more educated and you know how the game is played, you got a better chance of being right. Uh, when it comes to guessing which it is, when, 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 when is it going to be up or down? Uh, the, uh, however, you know, uh, boy, I kind of lost uh, where I was going with it. When <laughs> I sip a coffee here, will help me out here. Um, well, the question with the stock market was, I'm going to say, is, uh, man, everyone is expecting it. Bloom as I was saying a little bit earlier before I digress, and you know, I do that often. It's Bloomberg, CNBC. They've been, they've all been talking about. You know, they're expecting it. They're expecting it. Even the Uber uh, bulls have kind of uh, led into they're expecting a big drop in the market. Everyone's waiting for a giant crash. I mean, it's kind of like it's self-destiny in a way. I mean, because you, you hear it. Oh, when, when will the big crash be? Meanwhile, fear, at FOMO, fear of missing out. Keep sticking your money in that market. But when will the crash be? It's going to happen. When will it be? I mean... So is, is this true? We know it's going to happen. We just don't know what it's going to look like. You know, the 2008 crash in the stock market and equities market and the, and the housing market, 
Um, that was the uh, greatest bubble of all time two. We are in the greatest bubble of all time one. I mean, num you know, the biggest bubble of all time right now because don't forget, since 2008, they've never fixed a damn thing. All they've done is just simply pump more money into the system. Uh, again, I've always equated it to being like a, uh, uh, a uh, <clears throat> what was it? A patient, you know, a patient that's hemorrhaging, you know, that uh, has got huge gaping wounds and they're hemorrhaging blood. And let's say it's money at this point, you know, the comparison. And all the Fed did was come in and like a doctor and uh, they just patched up the, uh, they just put some patches over, it, some band-aids over this big gaping wound. And they just started injecting huge amounts of money, huge amounts of money which would be plasma, huge amounts of plasma in the patient to keep that blood pressure up and keep that patient alive. Uh, meanwhile, they, they never really fixed the problem. So that's where we're at today. So I suspect that the next bubble we see, the, the next explosion of the greatest bubble of all time we'll see, is going to be uh, uh, massive, massive. But And we know it's going to happen, just when and how. Uh, and when I say how, I'm kind of curious too. Will the next massive blow up of the greatest bubble of all time be like 2008? Will it be one of those deals, um, you know, like Black Friday, what was it, 1980 something, uh, that it just happens overnight, huge crash overnight? Uh, or is it going to be uh, slow? Um, my conspiratorial, conspiratorial mind tells me that, that if there's one thing that the feds, the markets, uh, and the people that control these markets have learned is that they don't like these overnight explosions. So I suspect what we're going to see is just kind of a, a taper down, <laughs> a massive taper down, a taper, a massive taper of the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. Uh, and uh, it'll be a little taper at a time, a little percentage at a time. All right. Uh, that's my thinking of how we were this next stock and, and housing and all this crash is going to occur. It's going to occur over a longer period of time so you won't notice it as much and you won't be pissed off as much at the government or the entities like the, the uh, uh, Fed. Uh, they know how to, you know, so defer the blame onto something else, all right? So if it doesn't happen overnight, they're going to, they can come up with all kinds of reasons why it's slowly happening. And of course, they'll never blame themselves. Uh, but that's actually, that's getting into uh, yesterday's video, why I started throwing all the F-bombs. <laughs> oh, I don't want to start reiterating that yesterday. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, tulip prices. I mean, I'm sorry, the Bitcoin prices out there. And I know I'm pretty harsh with uh, Bitcoin. And the truth of the matter is I'm not against it. I don't think it should be illegal. I think it should, if, if casinos are, are, are legal, if casinos are legal and sports betting is legal, Bitcoin should definitely be legal, okay? To me, it's just another one of those casino type markets here. Uh, Bitcoin is, and there's some people that have made a lot of money at casinos, folks. Can't take it away from them. Some of you are gonna go, oh, well, uh, you know, you know Bitcoin, Bitcoin is, the, it's not an investment in my opinion. It's a very highly, uh, it's not the Messiah, it's a very naughty boy. <laughs> Had to use that, that's from the life of Brian Monty Python. But no, it's not an investment, it's a highly volatile, uh, I don't even want to call it an asset because really what do you own? You just own a set of encrypted numbers that took a bunch of power to create. Um, so a uh, highly volatile um, casino <laughs> uh, where a lot of money can be made and a lot of money can be lost. Uh, and again, if you don't understand this market, I wouldn't play in it, folks. The nice thing about gold and silver is you can, as long as you're uh, avoiding, you know, uh, uh, co-party risk, I think we, we're going to start to call it, um, uh, you know, ha having that risk of someone else holding it for you. As long as you don't do that and you put gold and silver away, um, our uh, uh, historical uh, resume on gold and silver tells us that you will never go broke and you will never wake up and hear your shit went bankrupt or that Bitcoin went to zero or whatever close to because nobody cares about it anymore, uh, which is a possibility could happen, may not happen too, we'll see. Well, let's take a look at, I wanted to show you this chart. Uh, we looked at, again, this, this chart actually probably started off the F-bombs yesterday. So, um, however, I have had more coffee than I normally, yesterday I had one cup before I started this. So. <laughs> I'm blaming it on the coffee. I'd be a perfect government person, wouldn't I? Or a perfect person to work for government. It wasn't my fault. It was the coffee's fault yesterday. The coffee made me throw all those F-bombs. Maybe I should uh, reduce my coffee intake or increase it. Well, anyways, uh, let's take a look at Fred here and uh, economic data. Inflation, consumer prices for the United States. And we'll take a look here. Uh, consumer prices. Look at... 
I think we, this is the comparison that I'd like to use as far as inflation goes. Uh, and I think a lot of other writers and YouTubers, uh, not a lot, but some have made the similar comparison that uh, as far as inflation goes, we, we may be in a similar situation as uh, uh, we were when Nixon took us off the gold standard right here. And this is basically central banks pumping out more and more and more money. This is what causes inflation primarily. It's not because of a bunch. Inflation, uh, understood by most uh, people that uh, uh, don't understand economics or listen to CNBC or CNN or MSNBC or even Fox probably, uh, Fox uh, uh, business. Uh, and so, for inflation for these people is that it's, oh, it's the greedy merchants charging more. It's the greedy manufacturers. It's a, no, folks, what it is, it's your stupid politicians and your stupid, uh, uh, well, I'm not going to call the Fed stupid. I have in the past, and I'm going to get to that in a moment why I can't call the Fed stupid. And I don't think we can, I think when I see people start, even intelligent people I, I see call, you know, say the Fed is stupid. Oh, they've been wrong all the time. Oh, they're stupid. Uh, I don't concur with that. I believe that it's probably just the opposite, and we'll get into that in a moment as well. But take a look at uh, consumer prices. Look at this. I mean, charged up, and coincidentally, this is when we had our high in gold as well. I think that uh, we are currently in a similar situation in history like we were in this uh, 1970s and 1980s scenario right here. Again, this is the uh, Fed unleashing the fiat currency, increasing the M1 supply. And uh, actually, I think I can look at the M1 here. Let's take a look here and see if we can look at uh, M1. Uh, Fred, here, I'm going to go here. And uh, M2, M1, let's look at the M1 and look at that chart and see if the M1 was increased during that period as well. I'm going to look at the maximum chart. Uh, where, where do we go? Maximum. So we are in the maximum chart here. Money supply. There we go. One year, 10 year, and the max. Um, God, it doesn't go below 1970s. That's kind of weird. Uh, and inc incidentally, the money supply, wow, that's even more scarier, the fact that, but I can't see uh, what the money supply was at the time here. Why does that not go back before 1975. I don't know if they were tracking it pre-75. I hit the max level. Well, this is not helpful. Sorry about that, folks. But you can see the increase in the money supply here. And I suspect if we went back and looked at the chart in the 1970s, well, actually, you can start to see it increase here. But God, nowhere near this level right here. So I don't know what they're talking about when they don't think that this is going to make a major impact on our economy, the increase of the M1. Jim Rickards made, made the comment in an article the other day. All right, well, I'm off to explain why I don't think the Federal Reserve uh, uh, board members, I don't think the uh, people like Powell and Yellen and all these were, were idiots. I really don't. I think a lot of people say the Fed's been wrong every time, but let me present a different thought to you or, or something that may be a different uh, way to look at it that, that doesn't agree with that statement. Maybe they're not fit, uh, stupid. Maybe they haven't made uh, uh, mistakes continuously. Maybe it really is about just jawboning and keeping. Here's my comparison, and you've heard me make it many, many times, okay? This is the Fed Powell. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, all your fat past Fed chairman right here, uh, captains of a sinking ship. And basically what happens is you know, the water is up the chest and then the new captain comes in and he, this is the new captain. Here's Powell right here. Uh, Powell, the newest captain, just inherited a sinking ship, a, sh a ship that's been going down since 1913. If you look at the, the uh, you know, inflation and, and how a fiat dollar has destroyed the buying power of the U.S. dollar, these guys inherit a sinking ship every time they come aboard, okay? Their job, their job is to make sure the passengers don't panic. We are the passengers. You and I, governments are the passengers. Um, and this is why there's a lot of secrecy in the Fed and that uh, uh, there's not, Ron Paul for years was trying to get them to open up what they're talking about, who they get money to, and the Fed refuses to do that. And I can't blame them because now all of a sudden you would be able to see that the ship is indeed sinking. It's going down, folks. The ship is going down. It has been since 1913. We are the longest surviving fiat currency in history. Uh, the, the, these Fed people right here, these guys, in some degree, I got to admit, um, even though it's very deceptive and they're fucking with our money and our lives, oh, I did an F bomb. <laughs> um, I got to tell you, uh, they're not stupid, man. 
you, you can't be stupid if you've been captaining, if you've been the captain of uh, or continuous uh, resupplying captains, the Fed has. Just consider the Fed in general, and these guys are just, you know, different faces. The Fed has been the captain of this sinking ship since 1913, all right? We are the longest surviving fiat currency in history. The Fed can't really do anything about it, maybe. Maybe that's why my analogy about keep putting Band-Aids on the uh, dying patient and keep uh, 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 telling the patient, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. That's what the Fed has done best. That's the only thing they can do now is keep the passengers of the sinking ship calm, all right? Uh, no worries, this Captain is saying. No worries, folks. So you're up to your chest in water. We got it under control. Enjoy the dip. We'll have the problem fixed soon. Um, uh, just get back to your lives. This is exactly what the Fed's been doing for years and years and years. But folks, the ship is going down. No fiat currencies uh, has ever survived longer than the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar don't look like it's going to be any better. It's just going to survive longer than some of the fiat currencies of the past. But what do you expect for the world's largest economy run by people that are jawboning us to remain calm, stay calm? You know, uh, and what are they going to do when our heads slip below the water? Just tell us, hey, the smartest thing to do is just take a deep breath and let it go. <laughs> Anyways, that was a little smart ass on my comment. But th the Fed is in charge of a sinking ship. Uh, and of course, uh, let's just pretend this is a Fed, uh, I don't even know what that means, but just pretend this is a Fed chairman. I like to use this picture. And this is exactly what, this is Powell. This is Powell right here. Let's pretend this is Powell. That's Powell's face. We're not sinking, it's just a downward revision. <laughs> so, but again, people say, oh man, the Fed's made a mistake. No, they haven't made mistakes. They're just jawboning us. They're just lying, you know, lying to the patient, lying to the, uh, 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 cr the cr not the crew, but lying to the passengers of this sinking ship. That's all they can do. That's, they can, all they can do is calm the passengers uh, until the ship goes down. Um, you know, so and that's exactly what they're doing, and and they lie about it. Of course, they do. It's not sinking. It's just a downward revision. So, uh, boy, it's funny I could highlight that cartoon. <laughs> okay, so that's exactly. This is Powell, and this is the Fed just jawboning us. And uh, meanwhile, here's what you got your government doing right now. This is a perfect example. While the ship is sinking, and they're completely clueless in D.C., uh, why the fiat dollar is just fall, you know, the dollar is falling apart, uh, getting weaker, they're printing more and more of it. Neither party, blue or red, has any effing clue what's going on. Maybe a few do. Mankin, um, who obviously understands, Mankin, the only adult in the DNC room, <laughs> uh, uh, understood that, and that's why he knocked at uh, 1.7. But, you know, he still, he still doesn't get it entirely. The ship is going down, Mr. Mankin. All you idiots in Washington, D.C., the ship is going down. And, and this is what they've got to say. And should we do something about the low wages paid to these poor people down in steerage? <laughs> what a perfect comment. That's what, that is government in a nutshell. Uh, the ship is sinking and they're worried about, the, uh, they're worried about making sure that people uh, get a little more wages that are going to die shortly. What, what the? Anyways, I almost did it again. <laughs> uh, except I've had more coffee today. I'm going to have another sip as well. Give me one second here. So, how do you survive a, ship, a sinking ship? Mm. How do you survive a sinking ship? Well, first, a couple things you can do is you, you, you don't get on it. <laughs> Uh, but that's too late, folks. We've been on a sinking ship for a long time. The best way to survive it, and it's what I've been talking about, in my opinion, for years uh, now, is for is gold and silver. Gold and silver, I, I know, I know. I sell gold and silver. Oh, he's extremely biased. Yes, I am. I'm very biased on this. And yes, I sell gold and silver. And yes, I have a vested interest in this. Uh, but I also have a vested interest in trying to explain, you know, Profit's not a dirty word, so I mean, of course, I have a vested interest in selling gold and silver. But the truth is, I've been looking at this my whole life, folks, and I don't think there's any asset that has ever been around as long as gold and silver has maintained its value or just gone up in value over time. Yeah, it's a roller coaster ride, but you know, the thing is, is that gold and silver has survived every sinking ship in history. It survived the sinking ship of empires. It survived the sinking ship of corporations. It survived the sinking ship of fiat currencies, uh, which we are currently in right now, one of the largest uh, bubbles in all-time history in fiat currencies. That's what we're sitting in right now. This is, this is uh, uh, not the Titanic, sh uh, the, the, the next sinking of the ship. When the ship finally does sink, it's not going to be a Titanic, folks. It's going to be the world's largest cruise ship that goes down. It's going to take most everyone down with it. Again, in my opinion, if you own gold and silver, 
it's about wealth preservation. A lot of people bitching about gold and silver out there. Oh, it's not up. Oh, it hasn't done anything in the last year. Oh. Here's what it's done. For you people that moan and groan about silver not doing anything, gold not doing anything, in fact, being down a little bit, here's what it's done. It will maintain your wealth. When everything else takes a giant shit and goes to hell, it, you'll still have your gold and silver. You'll never declare bankruptcy. You won't hear your gold and silver. Uh, in the morning when you turn on a, uh, I hope you don't listen to CNBC or, or even Fox uh, a business, they all suck. Don't the Corporate news sucks, period, but I'll get into that in a moment as well. But, um, you know, if you're, in, if you're one of those whiners, oh, it hasn't done anything last year, you know, you're in the wrong market. I've been saying this for a long time. Gold and silver is about wealth preservation. There's, there's I forget who said it, but someone said that, um, you know, the, uh, 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 well, well, preservation. I almost lost what I was going to say, but <laughs> oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. It's all about wealth preservation, you know, saving, uh, uh, holding on to your money, because you know as well as I do that uh, many of you folks that have already made money, you've got your retirement, you're retired, you've got your pension fund, you want to protect that, okay? But making it is the easy part sometimes for some of us, you know. Until you made it, you don't understand that, really. Until, I mean, until you made it, some money and you got money coming and money saved. For people that are struggling, it's hard to understand, but uh, uh, what, making it is the easy part, folks. Keeping it is the hard part. Keeping your money is the hard part. And as you get older, you realize that more and more. So, and that's what gold and silver is about. It's about keeping, not waking up and hearing that uh, your portfolio uh, took a giant shit because the, uh, uh, the Fed uh, uh, has been jawboning us for such a long time and let the market explode, all right? Uh, let the, sink, the ship sink. You know, the, the Fed did their job. They kept you calm up until this point. But when you wake up in the morning and you find your pension's gone, or you find all this stuff is gone, or your dollar buys hardly anything, that's when you start to appreciate wealth preservation, all right? Uh, for you folks out there that uh, uh, want to get rich quick, and I find the get rich quick people are, are people that have, really are struggling still to make money, okay? They're, they're not, they've not made it. They can't even think about uh, trying to keep it, much less. Uh, they're still in the make it stage. And, and a lot of those people that bitch about gold and silver not going up high enough are the people that just haven't made it yet. That's my opinion. So if you're one of those folks, calm down, make it first, and then worry about keeping it. Uh, how do you make it? I don't know. If you're young, there's risky things like uh, casinos and cryptos. Um, if you're young and smart, there's probably equities that you could get into of companies that make real profits and make real products, not not just making a ton of money because uh, 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 you know corporate buybacks and uh, 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 money is getting thrown in by investors just hand over foot. You know, uh, but th that time will come again. I, I think once this uh, stock market takes a giant dump, I'm going to start looking for uh, good value in stocks and bonds as well. To, you know, be diversified. You know, I'm not, I, I've never said that you should only be in gold and silver, but uh, no less, we're in the biggest bubble of all time. Another little tip I can give you, the smartest thing you can do is turn off the television. Turn off the, uh, uh, not television, I mean entertaining things to watch, but turn off corporate news, man. I'm telling you, turn off that Fox, turn off that CNBC, turn off that MSNBC, turn off the fake media, folks. It's a corporate single narrative. Uh, they're almost, they're all the same, they just have a little different way of saying it for their little different audiences, okay? And just, and here, this is true, and just like that, Susie cured the worst of all. <laughs> I don't want to say the word. Uh, turn off the media, folks, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. Uh, but you're going to, well, what, what, what am I going to do afterwards? Start reading more. Start going out and looking at blogs. Start looking at alternative uh, opinions. Go to, you know, stay, you know, like ZH, Zero Hedge. You know, um, where, you know, there is some nonsense in here, but you get an opportunity. It's not a single point narrative. They don't just, a lot of the articles you're reading here are written by bloggers or not written by ZH. People that don't understand ZH will say, oh, that's a bullshit site, but it's not. Uh, there's, uh, most of the stuff in here is written by uh, different authors and different uh, viewpoints and different opinions. Something you will never get in corporate media. You get a single view narrative. Uh, maybe just with a slight spin because it's a different color. Blue and red might be slightly different in their spin, but it's the same narrative, folks. Really, it really is. Um, not too much to talk about here in ZH, but I, I got past myself. Um, well, turn off corporate news. Start reading more. Go online, start looking for different viewpoints on ZH and wherever you may get it. Uh, and listen, I'm not saying don't entirely listen to 
uh, corporate news because you got to see what the dogs are up to <laughs> otherwise they'll tear up the yard and you won't know but uh, think for yourself and question authority this is Timothy Leary the most important thing I can tell you to do even if you're even if you're addicted to uh, Fox or CNN or MSNBC think for yourself and always question authority if I could leave up one meme all the time, this would probably be one of them next to this one right here. It'll make you smarter than the average bear. And uh, when it comes to gold and silver, you need to think for yourself, folks. Don't listen to corporate media when it comes to gold and silver. I wouldn't even listen to them on, on most anything. They're, again, they're out for themselves. Well, let hey, and how many F-bombs? Only one so far? Uh, nobody's drunk out there, huh? I heard some of you guys are playing drinking games on how many F-bombs I threw yesterday. Well. As someone pointed out, you probably had to have your stomach pumped yesterday because I threw out a bunch of them. Uh, a couple things here I want to go over in GATA.org. If you are a gold and silver stacker you and you don't have GATA.org on your bookmark bar, then you really don't know what's going on in the gold market as far as the uh, uh, manipulation and who the manipulators are and how they do it. So I highly recommend you do that. If you're new to my videos, make sure you read these things. I'm going to go, and plus they have great articles that come out usually weekly. They throw a few things out. As far as silver goes, God it doesn't talk about uh, uh, silver manipulation. Talk about gold manipulation mostly. As far as silver manipulation go, no particular page I can tell you to go to, but I do encourage you to go to Butler Research. Ted Butler, he is the number one authority in the world on how the silver markets are rigged in COMEX. Number one, folks, I'm throwing that title to him, uh, and I'll debate anybody on that. He is number one. If you want to learn how silver is manipulated, how the game is played, and how you can win that game by knowing how it's manipulated, read Ted Butler, okay? Uh, type in Ted Butler silver manipulation or just go to Butler Research. Okay, uh, UK Supreme Court thwarts Maduro's bid to control 1.9 of the, um, you know, every, Again, Maduro is nothing more than a freaking commie socialist, uh, uh, untrustable character. You can't trust commie socialist uh, Marxists. You just can't trust them, all right? Uh, especially Marxist. But uh, Maduro is that, but no less. I got to tell you, I'm just being straight up. UK stole the gold of uh, Venezuela. They really did. I don't know if they, if they stole it because they want to keep it. I don't know if they stole it because they want to make regime change. I'm thinking they just want to keep it. Maybe they don't even have it. That's why they don't want to con uh, return 1.9 billion of Venezuelan gold. Uh, but again, that's speculation and conspiracy on my part. No less, um, U UK is stealing Venezuela's gold. Whether they like the political situation in Venezuela or not, it's none of their fucking business. They had a contract to hold Oh, I did it again. Sorry about that. They had a contract to hold Venezuela's gold, and they violated that contract. Now, and this is what I talk about. This is about counterparty risk. Venezuela should have never trusted UK to hold their gold, just like most of us shouldn't trust other people to hold our gold, even if they're trustworthy, because anything can take them down. But uh, no less, uh, in my opinion, uh, even as evil as Maduro's uh, government is, uh, the uh, Marxist, uh, socialist, and uh, uh, communist, evil bastards they are, um, they're still getting screwed here. I still think that uh, UK uh, is uh, in the wrong here. Uh, GATA dot exposed it all in 2021, exposed the whole gold rigging markets um, for establishing the rigging gold markets of governments and central banks 2020 may have been God's best year yet. Again, if you're not familiar how the gold markets are rigged, you do need to hit this button right here today. Good read, excellent, especially for you new folks out there. Um, Pam and Russ Martins talk about JPM's crime wave continues and impugning last year's settlement with the Justice Department. And uh, I talked about this. Again, yes, that was part of yesterday's F-bomb series. <laughs> mm. Excuse me, let me get a sip of coffee here. Uh, I'm going to read this to you real quick because I brought this up yesterday. Absolutely. J.P. Morgan should be, right now, there should be criminal charges filed against them. It should have been happened a couple times. And I'll, in a nutshell, I'm going to show you why or tell you why. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase is the largest bank in the United States. It also has a scandalous distinction of having admitted to five criminal felony counts throughout the U.S. Department of Justice since 2014 in a breathtaking series of additional charges from other regulators. On Friday, the SEC fined the security unit of J.P. Morgan $125 million for evading the ability of the SEC to adequately conduct its investigations of the bank because there was firm-wide firm use by traders, supervisors, and other personnel of non-official communications devices uh, to conduct its business. And what that means is they were using non-official ways of talking to each other because they didn't want to get caught in their blatant manipulation and their blatant illegal schemes that they're doing. 
this is why they got fined. Uh, why the firm failed to record and retain these messages required by law. These new violations, here's the kicker, folks, that's what I was talking about yesterday. These new violations occurred despite similar conduct during the bank's participation in the rigging of foreign exchange market, which brought a criminal felony charge against the bank by the Justice Department in 2015. So JP's already got a criminal uh, a felony charge against him that was withheld, all right? In that case, conspiring banks, including J.P. Morgan Chase, used Bloomberg Electronic Chat Rooms, which they referred to as the cartel, the mafia. J.P. Morgan Chase admitted to the felony charge and received a deferred prosecution agreement. It was also put on the probation and required to cease and desist from further lawbreaking. But just last September 29th, the Justice Department found more problems with this bank. The bank again was handed the deferred a second. Get this, folks. This is like you and I committing a crime. The judge says, you do this again, we're going we're gonna to reopen this last... Uh, uh, um, uh, prosecution against you, this criminal prosecution. And we're going to have a new prosecution against you, too. But meanwhile, J.P. Morgan, they just get threatened over and over with, def what, how do you get multiple deferred prosecutions unless the system is fucking rigged? Oh, did it again. All right, folks, only four this time, not 40 like yesterday. <laughs> it now appears that the uh, Justice Department may have denied access to the full scale of wrongdoing since the bank has now admitted some mess. All right, so this is just the ongoing uh, uh, scam that I've been telling you about folks for a long time and again make sure you read GATA.org. Uh, I was going to talk about ZH here but I'll keep the F-bomb content pretty low today <laughs> by uh, not going over political articles. Uh, kind of interesting to see what's going to happen in Turkey. Uh, Kathy Woods is indeed playing with fire in my opinion as well. Uh, that ARC whole deal could just take a giant dump as well. Her, her number one uh, a stock in that whole deal is Tesla, and Tesla's not doing so well, and Tesla's the only thing that's kept that whole fund doing well. Uh, so again, you could wake up in the morning and find that uh, whole ARC fund gone, or, or partial, you know, a fraction of its once self. Uh, again, this is what I'm talking about, folks. You don't have to worry about that with gold and silver. You're never going to wake up in wealth preservation, not making it, but keeping it. This is what the importance of uh, gold and silver is not making it, it's keeping it. Uh, and if you look at it from that standpoint, first, if you make money and we get into a bubble with gold and silver, that's just icing on the cake. Uh, can't argue with any of this stuff. Can't argue with the Japanese government. This is absolutely true. Man, they have some adults in their government, obviously, at least a couple of them. Um, and uh, you know what's cool about this right here is, uh, I didn't realize this, but Florida is exempt from the uh, OSHA mandates. Florida and uh, who's the other state? Uh, South Dakota. Um, is, is So even if the United States, uh, if, even if the President of the United States mandates this and the, and the uh, uh, Supreme Court says it's okay, it's not okay in the state of Florida and it's not going to be enforced in Florida. You know, and I got to say one thing, what a great governor we've had. Um, I, I'm not, I don't know even if I voted for him, I probably did, but uh, uh, what a great governor or his response to what's happening has been way better than the knee-jerk, draconian responses of 99% of the politicians out there. Uh, so he's done a good job. And uh, anyways, you know what? Uh, let's see, anything here in gold and silver we need to talk about? Nah, that doesn't have, oh, like we didn't know this. <laughs> oh, Durham, it took them that long to figure that out. We all knew this was happening. We know a lot of other stuff that you guys are in denial about as well. And, uh, it, you know, I was reading about Mankin and why he kind of like told him, they really did torture the poor guy. Uh, again, the only uh, the only adult in the DNC party is Mankin, uh, Mansion. He's the only adult there. All the rest of them are irresponsible, fiscally irresponsible children. Uh, he's the only uh, fiscally responsible adult in the entire DNC, in my opinion. Uh, pretty obvious too, isn't it? Well, let's move along here. And uh, wow, that's just shameful right there. Uh, wow, that's that's uh, reminiscent of. Uh, uh, you know, who was the uh, bad guy uh, in Germany that did the goose step? <laughs> uh, it seems like this, that type of thinking is coming back, especially with these uh, uh, idiots. Anyways, again, let me move out of here because I'll, I'll just go on another uh, F-bomb, uh, hmm, another cartoon. All right. All right. <laughs> That's funny, uh, but sad. No, sad funny. All right, let's move along to uh, yesterday's video. JP and Morgan uh, Chase fined $200 million. We just talked about that a little bit here. Uh, not too much to talk about in comments. If you're new to my videos, please hit that uh, like and that subscribe button if you would. Uh, I'm going to do a quick sort by newest first and then go down the line and see if there's any questions I can answer. I'd like to thank all my commenters and all my viewers out there. 
And uh, yes, they do. Um, I think uh, at the end of the year, a lot of people sell their dogs, and maybe that was part of yesterday's sell-off, Tim, possibly. But again, everyone's expecting a big down move in the uh, stock market. When is the question, right? Uh, hey, good morning, Joey. Uh, James, uh, I'm glad to hear there's free people in Kansas, sir. <laughs> Lots of free people in Florida as well, and I hope all around the country. Um, Fast Eddie says, concentrate on physical. We did. Crooked Comics, that's all I need to hear. Well, that's true, sir. And again, thanks for, oh, Silver Eagles. You're asking about Silver Eagles. I think the mint was told, this is conspiracy now. Um, but again, some conspiracy comes true. You know, conspiracy is not a bad thing. Usually it just, I have an intelligent conspiracy theory that says that the U.S. Mint was told to stop putting out silver uh, because of uh, problems with uh, physical supplies. That's my opinion, Fast Eddie. And have yourself a happy holiday. Thank you, sir. Add three more zeros. Thanks, Rick and um, uh, Deloitte Patrick. And thank you for watching. Never trust Gubermint. <laughs> We're on the same page, MG. Uh, fines are cash cow for the government. You're, hey, you know, I never thought about that way too, but you're right about that. What, what do they gain from putting these people in jail? Because they actually cost them money to put people in jail. Uh, but still, it's not fair. It's not right. It's not justice. Uh, thanks for watching, Knife Collector. And uh, I disagree, BB and B. Uh, I guess you know, disagree about this stuff. And um, uh, I think, you know, when, when you're going broke, it, hey, listen, in your household, if you're going broke, and you have no money, what do you do? You double down on stupid and spend more money? <laughs> Robert, that's exactly what they're doing. They're just doubling down on stupid and spending more money they don't have, which comes out of our pockets and the pockets of your children and grandchildren down the road. Uh, you got to understand economics to see this. And again, Manchin, uh, to me, was is the only adult in the DNC party, uh, fiscally responsible adult in the DNC party. Uh, thanks for watching, Robert, and happy holidays to you, sir. Uh, Ian says, as a boy, I was bad. <laughs> Agree with that. I was, too. Uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate you watching. And a couple of comments on my F-bombs yesterday by Stephen and uh, Akisha. Uh, sorry about that, guys, but, you know, I'm entitled to do them once in a while. And, you know, uh, I, in fact, I'm not too worried. If someone feels, uh, you know, if, so, if that hurts somebody's ears, then uh, uh, I'm sorry. They need to grow up a little bit. And, again, I'm not dissing religions. I'm not dissing anybody. Uh, but, you know, once in a while, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to throw off a few of them. So that's just uh, a fact. So if someone can't handle that, you know, I'm sorry to say it, but tough. Uh, but no less, uh, I will keep it down. It's not so professional, I agree. It's passionate, but always not so professional. I really, I thank both of you for watching and uh, commenting. And uh, I agree with you at some point here, but uh, no less, uh, thanks for watching. And happy holidays, too. Uh, Penguin says today's equity fall is nothing compared to January 2020. That was a disaster. Uh, wait for January 2022. Interesting thought. We'll see what happens. Uh, Alvaro, yeah, those are pretty cool. 720 fun. I think those have the Olympic rings on them as well. And thanks for watching. And in Spandanuto, uh, all commodities went to five. Sounds fishy. Agree with you 100%. And um, uh, cash money, silver, yes, and Linda, yes. Uh, again, just looking for some questions here. Folks, forgive me if I'm not specifically reading your whole comment, but uh, just trying to answer some questions. Uh, b uh, great show, Brian. Loving this you when you're fired up <laughs> and passionate about a subject at hand. Ah, oh, thank you for explaining that. That's what I wanted to say. I got a little fired up yesterday. I did, but that's okay. I'm entitled to it. So are you guys. If you guys got a little uh, fired up in my comment section on your videos, I'd be completely cool with it. And especially if it was passionate. If it wasn't about just being a jerk, I'm cool with it. If it's passionate, I'm cool. Throw in all the F-bombs you want. Uh, it's obvious to most now that they lie. Uh, these people don't know how long they've been lying or what they lied about. That's pretty much true. We've been lied for a long time, lied to. Um, in a mud flood, and it was back at the end of the 17th century. Good comments there, Bill. I really appreciate it. And uh, S. Pickett, um, I would like to show you one new for show and give the history on it. You always, you know what? Uh, I am going to start doing some coins here probably on the weekends. I'm going to probably throw in one coin because uh, I am really good at, I'm just as good at rare coins and paper money as I am uh, on uh, uh, bullion. Uh, in fact, uh, I can teach anyone how to be a really good bullion dealer in less than a year. So, uh, when it comes to numismatics, I'm telling you, uh, it's still, it's never ending, never, you're always learning when it comes to rare coins and precious metals, especially in the counterfeiting side of it. Uh, that's why I like coin dealers when buying bullion from coin dealers, because coin dealers are probably, when it comes to precious metals, uh, coins, and, and those kind of things, uh, for, as far as identifying counterfeits, there's no better than coin dealers. There really isn't. Uh, I mean, a good experienced coin dealer. So if a good experienced coin dealer can tell a bad counterfeit uh, rare coin, then 
you know, being able to tell what bad metal looks like is not a far stretch or not that much harder to do. Thanks for watching, Mr. Pickett. I appreciate it. Again, if you're new to my videos, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I think I'm going to call it quits here today. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I appreciate it and your comments. And, uh, you know, as you know, we are a local brick and mortar in South Florida. We do not ship. So if you don't live in my area, folks, I encourage you to find a good, handsome dealer like myself to buy from. Keep that money in your state at the very least. Try to keep it in your county or your city even better. But if you have to drive somewhere in your state and drive an hour or two to find a good dealer, uh, please do it. Um, you'll find someone that's competitive. I advertise to beat Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion. It's pretty easy for me to do on the lower uh, popular product, not popular products, but the lower product, the, the lower price premium products that you should be buying. I don't sell a lot of the overpriced crap that these companies do. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to them, but uh, I run a different type of business. If you want to buy Bullion, you're going to buy Bullion from us. And you're going to buy it for a, an inexpensive premium, and you're going to get a great deal on it, okay? Uh, so again, I advertise to be at Max JM and SD. Find yourself a good local dealer that does the same. That's my recommendation. And uh, I'm going to call it quits. Hey, folks, have yourself a wonderful day. Happy holidays, and uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.